Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today's another AMA episode. That is, ask me anything. I love to answer your questions. If you have a question you think is going to be of broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to victor at victorjm.com. That's victor at victorjm.com. Ryan from Fresno, California asks, I really enjoy the Real Estate Espresso podcast. Thanks for all the great work. This silly question has been in my mind for a while. Why do banks, including lenders backed by Fannie Mae, make 30-year fixed loans to home buyers? When I bought my first home in China, all home loans were adjustable rate. Let's say the interest rate goes back to a normal level, like 6 to 8%, and two years later, the bank, or whoever bought the loan from the bank, can still only get 4% for the remaining 28 years. Do they lose money? On the other hand, if interest rates go even lower, the homeowner can always refinance. The bank does not have such freedom. Will it put them at a disadvantage? Regarding refinance, what is a good criteria to apply for a refinance? Would it be an interest rate drop of 10%, 20%? Well, Ryan, this is a great question. In fact, two great questions. Let's talk for a moment about how the banking system works, and let's talk about how the banks make money. In the U.S., Canada, Europe, and much of the world, the banking system is based on a fractional reserve system. Let's look at an example where depositors put, say, a million dollars in deposit at the bank. The bank makes money in several different ways. The bank is taking one million in deposits, but it has the authority to write $10 million worth of loans against that one million in deposits. The bank makes money on the difference between the interest rate it pays to the depositors and the interest rate it collects from the borrowers. Let's do some simple math. Let's say the bank pays 1% interest to the depositor on that $1 million deposit. And let's say it's lending the money at 4%. The difference between the deposit and the loan is 3%, so 4% minus 1%. The bank is making 3% on the money it loaned out for the very first loan that it makes. But remember, the bank gets to loan the money out another nine times. In that case, it's making the full 4% interest nine times, which is a total of 36% plus the original 3% from the very first loan that it wrote. So the bank is making 39% interest on the original deposit. That's a pretty good rate of return. Now let's say that interest rates go up during the term of the loan. Let's say the bank now needs to pay 4% to the depositors instead of 1%. And maybe loan interest rates might be even higher, but that doesn't matter. In this situation, the bank's rate of return drops from 39% to 36%. It's still very far from losing money. Understand that when the bank makes a loan that's insured by a federally backed insurer, whether it's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or the U.S. government directly, through the Department of Housing and Urban Development, called HUD, this is about the lowest risk loan you can write. The business of banking is made lucrative by the bank leverage, that 10 to 1 leverage that we just talked about. The other side of that is what happens when a loan goes bad. If the loan is a conventional loan, then the bank has to write down the loss in the loan and it needs to go find another million dollars in cash really quickly. Otherwise, it can't pay the depositors their money when they go to the bank to make a withdrawal. It doesn't take too many loan defaults for a bank to become insolvent. So if those loans can be insured and they can be backed by the federal government, that's one of the safest loans you can write. Now, the other way the bank makes money is through fees. They typically charge an origination fee at the start of a loan. And fees usually in the range of about 1% of the loan amount. The first year of the loan, the bank makes another 1% on each loan, which brings their total rate of return, not from 39%, but takes it all the way up to 49% instead of the measly 39% that they're going to make in the subsequent years. Now, with conventional loans, the term of the loan is often, say, five years. The bank uses the renewal of the loan as an opportunity to charge additional fees, whether it's a renewal fee, an origination fee on a refinance, a prepayment penalty in the case of an early refinance, all of these different fees add to their rate of return. The bank is not going to lose money even if interest rates go up. On average, a fixed interest rate is a little bit higher than the variable rates. The loans represent passive income for the bank, but evaluating new loans is a lot of work compared with collecting a monthly payment. The bank has to work much harder to make money with variable rate loans because they don't know how long those loans are going to be in effect. They have to be standing ready to write a new loan at a moment's notice, whereas a loan that's on autopilot and is just delivering checks every month is much, much less effort. If you compare the simplicity of the long-term loans that are guaranteed by the government with a conventional loan, it's a pretty good business. 
The second part of your question was about refinancing. Your question was about interest rates. It's true that getting a lower interest rate might be part of the motivation for a refinance, but in my experience, the main reason to refinance is to change how your equity is being used. Let's say you own a building that has 50% equity. You might want to refinance to increase the loan amount and free up a bunch of equity. You can then take that equity and go buy another building. Since the refinance is not a taxable event, it's a better way to access your equity than selling a property. And in my experience, that's the main reason why most people refinance. Thank you, Ryan, for an awesome question. For the listeners at home, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.